Hey guys, I've got in my hands right here the newest, latest pocket lifesaver or combat lifesaver kit from us at Student of the Gun. I won't belabor you guys with the history of the pocket lifesaver. I've talked about it many, 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 many times. But what is in our kit? What are in most of our kits? Well, this kit in particular, all right, the combat lifesaver kit, it's the largest, uh, most inclusive kit we have. So we start out, we've got a rat's tourniquet, the olive drab, the new rat's olive drab, and this is a 2.0 version. All right, that's the rat's tourniquet. I've got an NPA nasopharyngeal airway. I've got a 14 gauge stainless steel chest decomp needle. Uh, an adhesive bandage for those things that don't require tourniquets, but you still should cover the wound anyway. A couple of alcohol wipes to clean the wound, to put the bandage on, okay. A mini gauze. You can use the mini gauze to wrap or to pack. All right. Got the uh, tan colored duct tape here. That's what we put in our kits is the tan colored duct tape. Three feet of it. We've got a Mylar space blanket to uh, keep your patient from going into shock and keep them warm after you've treated them. Okay. And we are also including a four inch uh, North American Rescue pre-made pressure dressing in these kits and of course uh, these are non-latex gloves. These are actually good gloves uh, and they're extra large because why? Because small people can put their hands in extra large gloves but people with extra large hands cannot put their hands in small gloves, right? There's one other uh, item that I didn't mention yet that we've been putting in our kits for years and years and years and kind of tongue in cheek, I've been calling them the 18 Delta Combat Blood Soaker. And the reason I called them an 18 Delta Combat Blood Soaker, for those of you that don't know, the military U.S. Army designation for a special forces medic is 18 Delta. And when I was taught about 10 years, no, more than 10 years ago, 10, 12 years ago, when I was taught TCCC, I was taught by U.S. Army combat veteran, 18 Deltas, and uh, also Air Force pararescue guys. And one of the things that the 18 Deltas always had in their kit, in addition to the normal issued stuff, was they had these right here these maxi pads and tampons all the stuff out of all the stuff in this kit i've got a four inch three and a half inch what have you stainless steel 14 gauge decomp needle right i've got a nose hose to go inside of your nose all the way back to the back of your throat to maintain an open airway i've got tourniquets right i've got duct tape all that stuff out of everything in the kit what sends people over the moon this little guy here, this 25 cent tampon. People write paragraphs about how terrible it is and how awful it is and how dangerous it is. Did I ever say one time to use tampons to stuff bullet wounds? No, never, not one time ever did that. We threw it in there as kind of a tongue in cheek thing, stick it up your nose, you got a nosebleed, shove it up your nose. All right, uh, we have shown in our survival kits how you can take this and you can fluff it up and it becomes a giant cotton ball and it catches sparks to use as tinder for an emergency fire. If your closet stinks, soak this in essential oils, soak it in peppermint oil and hang it up in your closet. Your closet won't stink anymore. If you wanna paint your toes and you can't get your little pinky toe separated from your other toe, take this and shove it between your toes so when you paint your toes, that they won't get the paint on the other one, all right? Uh, if you have a woman in your life that has that, oops, this just happened situation, and I don't have anything on me, most of them do, but just say they don't, hand this to her and say, happy birthday, go crazy. What drives me, I guess, the uh, almost drives me to drink is this. Of all the things in this kit, and of all the things that are going on in the world today, in the United States of America today, we have local, state, and federal government agencies that are completely ignoring and circumventing the law of the land, the Bill of Rights, and the Constitution. We have government agencies that are circumventing and ignoring the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, the Fifteenth Amendment, the Fourteenth Amendment. And what are we arguing about? We're writing paragraphs 
and we're having lengthy conversations on Facebook and what have you about the pros and cons of a tampon. Ladies and gentlemen, here's what I'm going to tell you. In this world today, the world that we live in, there are a lot more things that should uh, require your attention than whether or not a 25 cent tampon is inside of a medical kit. You want to fix this world? You want to do something valuable with your time and energy? Address the real problems and quit worrying about the tampon. That's it, bitches. Hey, welcome to another video from Skinny Medic. I've been doing YouTube videos now for a few years. Never once have I done a video on these, and never once have I told you to put one of these in your trauma kit. So, today's the day. We're going to do a video. We're going to talk about it. It seems like every video that I do that talks about bleeding control, hemostatic agents, galls, and like that, there's comments about using tampons to plug holes, plug GSWs, gunshot wounds with this product here. They said, I'm going to put these, I've got it in my trauma kit, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to take this apart and show you just how little gauze is actually in here. And we're going to talk about that, show you some other products that are cheaper and that are just as effective. So now if we talk about what is the best, what is the best product that you can buy to save your life, to save your friend's life, save your buddy's life, whatever, then let's talk about hemostatic agents, okay? This is the gold standard. This is what people are using for wound packing. This is Combat Gall Celox. Now, I get it, guys. These things are expensive. You're talking about $45, $55 in that area for brand spanking new Combat Galls. So we talked about what the very best was. That's our hemostatic agent here. Let's go down the line just a little bit here. So this is just a roll of clean, curl X, whatever you want to call it. This is basically just cheesecloth here and then compressed gauze. This is a lot cheaper to buy a box full of cling or compressed gauze. Right, so when we talk about bandaging wounds, we can pretty much all agree on 4x4s and 5x9s. They're the two most prevalent types of gauze we use for that. This is what you're gonna see on every ambulance, most first aid kits, things like that. So the 4x4 here is for minor injuries, okay, minor wounds. This is gonna be oozing blood, abrasions, things like that. It really doesn't absorb that much blood then you get to the five by nines this is more of a moderate to heavy bleeding so this will absorb a lot more blood all right so i've opened one up and i just want to show you how much galls is actually in here so push this out unroll it that's about it folks there is how much galls is in here that you say that we're going to control major bleeding with now let's compare these to the galls that's actually in the tampon here. So if we fold the 4x4 up, I'll get it kind of the same size-ish. You can see here that it's pretty close. Now obviously the tampon's more dense, but you're fairly close here. And this is the one that we said that we would use for minor bleeding. So really how much more absorbent is this? So. If we talk about the 5x9 here, this is the one we talked about that we would use for the moderate to heavy bleeding. There we go. You can see the 5x9 is going to absorb a lot more blood than the tampon. Alright, so let's lay this out on the table. Here's our tampon. Here's a roll of clean. Now, I, the one I opened up was sterile. But the tampon's not sterile, so that doesn't matter. You can buy the non-sterile gauze, okay? Because this is not sterile. It has no need to be sterile. So a tampon is not sterile. doesn't matter. So this cling that opened up was sterile. It makes it a little bit more expensive, but you can buy the non-sterile for really cheap. So this is just cheesecloth here. And you can see how much more we have than the tampon. So this is cheap, guys. So for those you tell me about price, can't do it. So you can see a lot more here. So let's talk about the compressed galls. Now compressed galls, a little bit more expensive than the cling, but let's open it up. And now, without even unrolling this to make it not so dense, you can see a huge difference here, guys. This is it. So one of the things that always comes up is in a crap hits the fan situation, where there's no medical help coming, no 911, no hospitals, things like that. Guys say they're gonna use these. They're gonna have these in their bug out bag and trauma kits. Although they should be in your bug out bag, but not for trauma. 
that's a whole nother video. But people are gonna say they're gonna use these in a crap hits the fan situation. And I don't I don't see it, I don't get it. Where this is basically cotton material. This is a, a non-sterile woven mater cloth material to absorb blood, other materials, and you're, these are going to be more available than a t-shirt or a towel or whatever else. I, I don't see it. I don't, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't get that mindset of it. You know, we talk about, you know, infection, all that stuff. I, I get it, okay? But at that time, we're just worried about controlling major bleeding. You're, you're talking about you're going to use this for a gunshot wound. So that's pretty, pretty life-threatening. That's pretty scary. So at that point in time, we're just worried about stopping the bleeding. We'll worry about infection later. So... I don't see that portion of it. Another thing guys will talk about is the price point. They just they can't afford anything better, so this is what they're gonna use. They're gonna raid their wife's cabinet and stick tampons in their trauma kits. And I, I tend to argue that too. I think your priorities are probably in the wrong place. You know, I don't expect every single person to go out and buy the hemostatic agents. I get it. These guys are expensive, I understand. But this roll of clean here. Is cheap. This compressed gauze is cheap. So I don't get the price point either. I actually pulled up Amazon right here because this is the one you guys always argue with me about my prices on. You tell me you can get it on Amazon cheaper. So Amazon's not making medical videos for you. But stretch gauze, 12 rolls, four feet by four inches, and um, four yards, sorry, not feet. Uh, six bucks. That's cheap. So that's 12 of them. So these things, small box, like five bucks, okay? So for about the same price as you, your wife's buying a box of these, you can buy 12 rolls of clean. Put a couple of these in your trauma kit, it wound packs just fine. Like we use this in class, like it works. This is not as good as this, but this works. So you're talking six bucks for 12 rolls of these off Amazon. So the five by nine which talked about here showed you this one remember showed you these so this is for the moderate to heavy bleeding controls a lot more blood absorbs a lot more blood than this so a uh, box of 36 for eleven dollars looks like there's a box of 25 there for thirteen dollars so there you go so um, this will go a long way than this and then probably the closest thing that I could find with the same amount of galls as the tampon is in here is uh, a 200 pack for eight bucks off Amazon if you got Amazon Prime you got free shipping so for the same stuff material here eight bucks you get 200 packs of it so price it's not there guys So wrapping up this video, I just I don't see a need for a tampon and a trauma kit. I just don't see it. There's nothing there to support it. There's not enough galls in there to support it. The price point's not there to support it. Nothing's there to support it, guys. I don't I don't get it. Yes, would it work? Maybe, probably. Okay, I get it. Did somebody, some special forces, do carry it in the army, military? Things like that, yes, they do. I know they do, okay? I get it. But is it the best thing? No, it's not. There's a lot better things out there for you to control bleeding with than a tampon. And yes, there is a time for improvised medicine, okay? I understand. I've talked about videos about making tourniquets, things like that. In a bad situation, yes, I'm going to make a tourniquet because I'm not going to have enough commercial tourniquets out there. You know, I may have to use a belt. I may have to use... A triangle bandage like I did with how to make a tourniquet video. Improvised medicine has its place, but improvised medicine will also get a lot of people killed, and that's what the people don't realize. They're gonna use duct tape or they're gonna use all this stuff, and I get it. There's a time and a place for that, but improvised medicine will kill patients. So when you get done watching this video, go out to your trauma kit, take this out of your trauma kit, put it in your bug out bag for your wife in case she needs it if you have to bug out, but take it out of your trauma kit. Put some compressed galls in there. Put a roll of cling in there. But take this stupid thing out. So I hope this video helped. You never know when you'll be the first responder bringing the right gear and the right training. 
So with that being said, if you have not looked and thought about signing up for one of my trauma classes, you really need to do that. I've got two classes already scheduled for 2017. I'm going to schedule some more out. Just need to get those two scheduled first. Uh, but there's people coming from Canada. Uh, there's a gentleman talking about coming to the UK. So don't let travel be discouraging because people are, are coming into this class. So people are already signing up for the classes. Um, so take a look at that. Try to fit in your schedule. So thank you guys for all the support. Don't worry, bro. If somebody shoots themselves, I got tampons. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> So how effective are using tampons for gunshot or well, any sort of wound, any major, major bleeding that you'd have to, you know, pack to wound? You know, I was, I was just on a, I was on a radio show the other day and they asked me the same exact question. <clears throat> and I'll say the same thing I said, then there's two places that tampons can go. One of them's the nose and one of them's not the nose. Uh, and, uh, we, we, we've used tampons in the emergency department for nosebleeds before, but that's before we had better stuff out there. Back in Vietnam, the guys were saying, Hey, plug this hole with this tampon. They didn't, they didn't know any better. They didn't have anything better out there. You know, times have changed, man. Uh, and if you're still carrying tampons in your med kit, uh, unless you have, uh, unless you have a, you know, female shooter who might hit her, 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 you know, menstrual cycle right in the middle of a, of a class and need a tampon. <laughs> you don't, you don't need them in your, in your med kit. No. And I'm not saying it to be flip. It's just, I mean, that's the only time you need a tampon, honestly, uh, because you look at, look at, look at, look at a basic breakdown of a tampon. You got two, four inch strips of one and a half, one to one and a half inch wide gauze co or p compressed cotton on a string. All right. One of my buddies in, in Iraq, one of their guys caught a PKM round at a, a keyhole into his, into his left hip and literally blew out his left butt cheek. They put three rolls of combat gauze into that wound before it was fully packed. That's 36 feet of gauze. So Jesus. do the math, man. Do the math. You're talking a multi-dimensional, uh, multi-channeled uh, wound possibly, and, and you know, that's going to be very, the cavitation, the stretch cavity is going to be, the crush cavity is going to be massive on that. And a tampon, man, that's like tossing the fat kid a Pez. Ain't going to be, they ain't going to be happy. You know? <laughs> it, it just, it ain't, it ain't working, you know? Well, there's the opening for the podcast right there. Yeah. <laughs> That's an effect kid of Pez. You know, and, you know, spitting on a forest fire, whatever, whatever analogy you want to use. It, it's just, I don't recommend them. I don't advocate them because they're not effective. I mean, back in the people say, oh, that's what my corpsman swore by. Well, yeah, your corpsman went, was, you know, a baby corpsman in Vietnam. And that's, you know, we've got a lot better stuff out there now. Yeah, it's more expensive, but again, what's your life worth? I mean, that's just, that's what it boils down to. What's your freaking life worth? It, it's such a good question too, because every <laughs> video that you'll ever see anywhere, some dude says, I just carry tampons. It'll be fine. Yep. It's yeah. like, no. No, man. No, <laughs> no, no bro. It, it won't be fine. And, and that's just it, man. And that's, that's, we, we try to educate people and I, and I'm never, I'm never gonna, I'm never going to tell somebody, Hey, you're a moron for carrying them. But I, because my job is to educate, not to, not to degradate somebody, you know, degrade someone and say, Hey, you're an idiot for doing that. Because I'm going to say, Hey, you know what? Back in the day, that was a good choice. Now we've got so much more better equipment out there that's better suited and as actually designed to do the job. You got to spend some money, but you know, what's your life worth? More than a tampon. Absolutely. Yeah.